Hello, um, thank you for coming. I wasn't really sure how to start this whole thing off, but one of the people I interviewed, Tom, he asked me who exactly this film was for, and I really didn't know what to say, um, but I've thought about it, and I kind of realized that I'm moving into a new part of my life, and it's really important to recognize the things and people and places that have really meant the most to me, and I think that through this, I can really show my appreciation in a way that I enjoy. Um, so this film is for me a little bit, but it's also for you. Um, everybody watching that's supported me and always have been there for me, I just can't thank you enough. Um, so I really hope that this shows something that I'm appreciative of through um, shopping secondhand, and hopefully by the end of it you'll realize what good junk is. <laughs> so, we start with thrift stores, a vital place for my upbringing. Most of the clothes, including the ones that I'm wearing right now, are from thrift stores, and I have been so affected by these places. So, please, enjoy. Well, my name is Mark Main. I'm a deacon with the Catholic Church. I'm in, I go to St. Francis of Assisi. I've been here at St. Vincent de Paul for about eight, nine years. St. Vincent de Paul, the society itself, was started in 1833 over in Paris, over in France, by a Frederick Ozanen. Here in Abilene, we started on December 20, no, January 23rd of 1963. So we just celebrated a big anniversary. But we've been here doing, doing this type of operation since before I was stationed in Abilene with Dias. Even though we are a Catholic society, we help anybody who comes to the store or who calls our community services. Doesn't matter what their race, nationality, uh, their religious beliefs are. We help everybody. Let me tell you a story. I was over at St. Francis. We used to have a food pantry. And people would come in and they could get food, you know, once a month. And this one day, um, this person came in and we gave him three bags of groceries. I had another one of our maintenance folks came in and said, look what I found out on the, you know, in the parking lot. It was the three bags of groceries to give that person. I guess they didn't like what we gave them. Conversely, there was a family that came in and they were living in a hotel and they had no food. So again, went and gave them the, the groceries and everything. And they started crying, they were so happy. They just, they couldn't believe it. And that's a feeling you get when you help people out here. It is just rewarding in itself to, to work here. Thank you, Deacon Mark. Um, we have one more interview all about the joys of antique stores and collecting. I have always loved antique stores. Whenever you walk in, you're instantly greeted by this interactive I Spy book. And no matter how cluttered or bizarre it is, it's always a joy and a wonder to walk in the crowded halls of an antique store. So without further ado, please enjoy. My name's Tom Craig. I'm the co-owner of the Antique Station in downtown Abilene, Texas. The shop itself has been in business for 23 years now. We opened in 2000. Um, I've been buying and selling antiques, collectibles, vintage merchandise 
for 46 years now. I started when I was 10 years old. My parents were in the antique business. So I grew up in the antique business and I was tagging along with them all the time, going to auctions, to estate sales and, and everywhere they bought. So I started buying stuff that interested, my, interested me and that's how I got started in the business, picking up things first just to collect, but then I realized if I want to keep buying, I need more money. So I started selling a few things and all of a sudden I had a little bit more cash flow and I was able to buy more. So the buying and selling started that way. So I've, I've literally been buying and selling since I was about 10 years old. I've seen a lot of changes in the market over the past 46 years. And it's, it's an interesting dynamic to see what the secondary market does when you start talking about collectibles, vintage items, antiques. When you're in a business like this, you like to make money because that allows you to stay in business, but it's a whole lot more than that. It's a very relational business. I tell people all the time, what we find on the secondary market are things that people have collected, that they've filled their house with, that have been parts of their lives for years and years and years. So they have a lot of emotional attachment to these items. And as they let them go, our goal is to find someone else to love those things just as those people did when they first collected them. So I tell people all the time, you know, we're in the business of adopting things out, so to speak, finding new homes for people to love things. Being in the business, I collect a lot of things. It's just the nature of the beast. You end up collecting all kinds of things. I started collecting antique advertising when I was about 12 years old because I wanted to decorate my room in signs. So some of my favorite pieces that I've found are some antique gasoline advertising signs from the 1940s. Um, some Texaco signs, some Gulf signs, the old porcelain signs, ones that actually came out of working gas stations. Back in the early 80s, we had a friend who would literally travel the back roads and see old dilapidated gas stations and go knock on the door of the property owner and say, would you sell some of this stuff? And he turned up all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I've got some really cool Gulf gas, Texaco signs, things like that. I've got a Texaco gas pump in our backyard. I've got the original globe that goes on top of it, but it's in the house. It's not outside just to be safe. It's not just that they're really neat, good pieces, but they're special because they come from a time in my life where we were finding stuff with good friends and it represents relationships that really mean something to me. I cannot tell you this guy's name even to this day because we called him Hootie Pole. That's just our nickname for him. And that's what everybody called him. And, you know, he would come to the house and he would, he would open the back of his pickup and say, this is what I found. And those were, you know, my really treasured pieces represent really special times in my life. And that's what makes this special, you know, because there's always a story. There's always a relationship. There's always something that makes it meaningful. Before we go, I'd like to share one last thing. Um, it's not an interview or anything like that, but a poem that I wrote originally to my mom, but I think it's important to share it with all of you. So, um, without further ado. <laughs> through every alleyway and thrift shop, every estate sale and long journey to find the origin of a tattered garage sale flyer, we found good junk. It may be bashed or broken, but we'll put it in our pile, bargain for it, wade through old carpeted houses, search through cramped closets, finding something to take home. I've watched splintered, bent wood chairs repaired and welcomed in the ensemble of our dinner table. Books with scribbled notes in the margins are proudly placed on our shelves. 
cups and cutlery from feasts far gone sit neatly in our kitchen drawers. My house is a place of good junk, a place where the bashed and broken are met with open arms. Thank you.